Welcome to part 2 of decimals. In part 1, we have dealt what decimals exactly are, what are the unlike and like decimals and what are the decimal place. So, a just quick recap of that. Decimals, fractional numbers whose denominators are either 10, 100 or any multiple of 10. For example, 5 by 10, 6 by 100, maybe 81 by 1000. So, these are called fractional decimal numbers, fractional numbers whose denominator are a multiple of 10. So in that case we represent 5 by 10, 5 by 10 as 0.5. So this is how we represent decimal numbers. Point is 1, 0 in the denominator. I start from here and then put a point, go back left only one place and then put a point so I get 0.5 as the answer. The decimal place, the number of digits present after the decimal point. See, there are few digits present after the decimal point like 23.17. So, these are two digits that are present after the decimal point. That means there are two decimal places in this. Two decimal places. Had there been three digits, it would be three decimal places. Like and unlike decimals. This also we had discussed earlier. Suppose 42.78 and 45.17. 6, 1. These are not like decimals as of now because after the decimal point there are two places and here there are three decimal places. That means the number of digits after the decimal point is 2 here and 3 here. To make them like I have to have these digits, number of digits after the decimal point as equal. So I put a 0 here and now they become like decimals. Now they become like decimals. Unlike that means they were unlike before. If I remove this 0, 0 doesn't have a value here. 0 doesn't have a value that I have already told you. In case if there is a numeric digit, then it has a value. But had it been like this, any number of zeros I can put here to make two decimal numbers like decimals. Because if, if I put here two zeros, see, and if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I put one more zero and these two become like decimals. So this is how we make unlike decimals as like decimals by putting the required number of zeros after the last numeric digit. After the last numeric digit we put zeros. So in last part we have seen how to express fractions as decimals. A just quick recap of that once again. 45 by 100 is the given number. What we observe is the number of zeros in the denominator and accordingly we start from here and take two chunks and put the point like it is 0.45 if I put the point here because there are two zeros in the denominator I start from here and take two chunks similarly here there is only one zero so starting from here I come here and put the point so this becomes 76.7 so this is how we make fractions into decimals when the denominator is a multiple of 10 today we are going to see when the denominators are different, rather, I mean, they may not be 10 or a multiple of 10. Suppose it is 75 by 8 or 2 by uh, 6. So, this kind of decimal also we have to learn to do. And moreover, in last we had done comparison of fractions, comparison of decimals. For example, 45.35 is compared to 45.40. When the whole numbers are same, when the whole numbers are same, we have to start comparing the very first digit after the decimal. So this is 3 and this is 4. That means this number is definitely greater. First of all, you have to see the whole number part. Had it been 46, directly you could have written that this number is greater. And had it been, suppose 3, suppose here it would have been 3. Then what? Then what you do is, you compare the first digit and then come to the second digit. Then come to the second digit. In this case it is 5 and here it is 0. 5 is obviously greater so this number becomes greater. So this is how we have done comparison of two decimals earlier also. Like unlike decimals and now we will be doing some fractions which have a denominator other than 10 or a multiple of 10. Now we will see two numbers which are given to us. First number is 2 by 5, the other is 12 by 48. 
Now we'll learn how to change these fractions into decimal. See, the first the numerator will come. This will be coming here. And this is the denominator which will be coming here. 2 is the numerator which comes here. And 5 is the denominator. Now we'll do simple division of these. For example, 5 zeros are 0. We cannot put anything here. So it is the remainder is 2 again. Now we put number of zeros here as many required. So it will be a point because I am putting the 0 here. So I have to put a point here. Now 5 4s are 20. 5 4s are 20. So what I get the remainder as 0. Unless and until I get the remainder as 0 or at least till 3 digits, till 3 decimal places I have to find out the answer. So here I am getting in the very first decimal place 0.4. So this equals 0.4. This is how we do this. Once again I will say this is the numerator which comes inside. This is the denominator which will be here. And 0.4 is 0's are. 5 zeros are 0 as 5 is greater than 2. So it has to be 0 times. The remainder is 2. And then we put as many zeros as required but one by one. So once we are putting in zeros, I have to put a point here. So I put the point here as well. And this 5 fours are 20, the remainder is 0. So till I get the remainder 0 or as I said, till at least 3 decimal places we have to find out. But remember one thing, once you see this, you should know that the answer has to be less than 1 because it's a hint. It's a proper fraction 2 by 5 where numerator is smaller than the denominator. So obviously the answer is going to be smaller than 1. So this is something which is, has to be kept in mind so that when you find out the answer, it's a double check because it's less than 1. 0.4 is obviously less than 1. So that means the answer is correct. We see this one 12 by 48. First of all, 12 by 48 have a common factor between them because this is not the lowest term. So what I do is I reduce it to lowest term. 12 ones are, 12 fours are 48. 1 by 4. See, when, once I get 1 by 4, now I can convert it into a decimal. Even this can be converted to decimal directly, but the better option is and the easier one is to convert it into lowest terms first and then do. 1 by 4. Now here we see 1. 1 will be coming inside. 4 is the denominator. It will be here. The denominator has to be outside. The numerator has to be inside this. Now once again if I see 4 zeros are 0. Once again I get a remainder as 1 here. Then I am putting as many zeros as required. But I put a point here. I am putting as many zeros as required. Now if I get 1 0 here it becomes 10. Now 4 2's are 8, 4 2's are 8, the remainder is 2. Again 1 0 I get it from here, so it is 20. Now 4 5's are 20, 4 5's are 20. In second step I am getting that the remainder is becoming 0. Here there was an only 1, after the 1 decimal point I got the remainder as 0. So it was finished, like it was 0.4 is the final answer. Here. In one case, when I am after first decimal place, I am getting the remainder of 2. Then again, one zero is copied down, it becomes 20. So, 4 fives are 20. And now I am getting the remainder as 0. That means 1 by 4 is expressed as 0.25. Or 12 by 48 is expressed as 0.25. So, this is how we convert fractions into decimals. We will do some more examples see some more examples suppose this is a number 1 by 20 this is a fraction but here when we put see 1 will be inside 20 will be here as I said the denominator is going to be outside the numerator is inside I am putting zeros as many required because I know that 20 is obviously greater than 1 so 20 0 the 0 I get 1 I copy one zero from here and I put a point here. When I copy one zero, I have to put a point here. Once again, 20 is greater than 10. So once again, it will be 20 zeros are zero. Again, I get the remainder as 10. Once again, I copy a zero from here. Now it becomes 100. 
So now 20 and 100. 100 is definitely a multiple of 20. So 20 into 5. That means 20 fives are 100. And now I get the remainder as 0. When I get the remainder as 0, that means I have got the complete decimal. Here, so it will be equal to 0 0.05. 1 by 20 can be represented as 0 0.05. In this example, if we see 2 by 3, this 2 will be coming inside, 3 will be outside. 3 is the denominator which will come outside, 2 will be coming inside. I am putting a few zeros, they may be required. So as 3 is greater than 2, so 3 zeros are 0 and this will be 2 as the remainder. But I have to put a point because I am using these zeros now which I have put after the decimal point. So I put a point here. I copy one zero, this becomes 20. Now, three six are 18. I get 18 here. And again, I get a remainder as two. And once more, I copy a zero from here. Again, it becomes 20. So here you have to observe that when one, after one step, I'm getting 20. Then again, I'm on the in the second step, I'm getting 20. So this may be a recurring thing. Because it will keep occurring. Now once again if I do 6, it becomes 18. Again I get 2 as the remainder. And once again when I copy a 0, it becomes 20. That means it will go on forever and ever. 0. 0.6666. So as I said, till 3 decimal places we can find out. And then stop. We can find out till 3 decimal places and stop. So this will give me the answer as 0. 0.666. It will go on. Because it's a recurring thing. It will go on. But this answer is also perfectly correct. When you write 2 by 3 as 0.666, it's a perfectly correct answer. Till now, we have seen the conversion of fractions into decimals. Now, it will be the other way around. When we have been given some decimals, we have to make fractions out of it. See, how do we do this? 0.45 is given. 0.45 means 45 by 100. As I said, see, if I see this, first I see this part, two zeros are there in the denominator. When I start from here and take two jumps and put a point, I get 0.45. So as many number of decimal places are there, you remove the decimal point and put that many zeros here in the denominator with a 1. That means a multiple of 10. Here, had it be 0.4, it will be 4 by 10. This is what we will do here also. So, 45 by 100 is the required fraction. But once again, it is not in the lowest term. So, it is always better to convert it into lowest term. I start with a 5. 5 nines are 5 20. So, this is what is my final fraction of 0.45. It is 9 by 20. 45 by 100 is there. 45 is a multiple of 5 and 100 is also again a multiple of 5. So, 5 9s are 45, 5 20s are 100. So, I cut it into lowest term and I get the answer as 9 by 20. We will see here 1.25. Once again, when I remove the decimal, decimal place, see once I remove the decimal point, I have to take two jumps. So, that means I have to write 100 in the denominator because there are two decimal places after the decimal point so I have to write 100 here as many number of decimal places as many number of zeros now 125 by 100 is again not in the lowest term this is also a multiple of 25 this is also a multiple of 25 so it will be 5 by 4 because 4 25s are 100 5 25s are 125. So, this is what we get as the final fraction. This can be definitely converted into a mixed fraction, but for now we are doing decimals as fractions. So, this is how we represent the decimals as fractions. We will see some more examples. We will see this example where there are three decimal places 0 0.005. So, here if I write it as 5, then I have to have three zeros in the denominator. Because there are three decimal places, so I write 1000 here. But once again, this is not in the lowest term. When I put it in the lowest term, I get it as 1 upon 200. So this is the required fraction here, 1 upon 200. Because this is in the lowest term. 
this one 2.07 2.07 has two decimal places so it can be written as 207 207 divide by 100 as there are two decimal places so i write 100 here because two decimal places means divide by 100 but here when we see it cannot be reduced further it has to be left like this only because 207 and 100 do not have a common factor among them. So this is the final fraction which can be converted into a mixed fraction. But as of now we can leave it like this as the question is just convert the decimals as fractions. So in next part we will be dealing some multiplication of decimals, division of decimals and we will be learning some more about recurring decimals. Like recurring uh, as I said points 6, 6, 6. That's a recurring decimal. So we'll learn something more about in coming parts. Hope you are liking all our videos. So send in your suggestions and queries in the comment box. Share the videos with your friends and press the bell icon for the latest information on all the videos of Maths and English. And don't forget to subscribe the channel. Idea Inkling.